I'm going to split lesson 3.8 into two lessons. So I'm starting on page 191, and we'll talk about what we know about the slopes of lines that are parallel and perpendicular to each other, but we'll stop when we reach the point where we wanna start writing the equations of those lines. So first of all, just a really quick review of slope from algebra. So remember, um, a, a line can run four different ways. If it leans to the right, it's going to have a positive slope. If it leans to the left, it has a negative slope. If the line is perfectly horizontal, it has a slope of zero. And if the line is vertical, it doesn't have a slope. That slope is undefined. Okay, that's a quick review from algebra. We think of slope as rise over run, and the rise is the vertical change, the up and down change, the run is our left and right change. Well, the vertical change, that's the y-axis, so that's the difference in our y's, y sub two minus y sub one, and this would be our horizontal axis, which is x, so that would be the difference in our x's, and that's the formal, um, formula for finding slope. So when we're talking about lines that are parallel to each other, anytime you have lines that are parallel, they are going to have the same slopes. Two different lines will be parallel to each other if their slopes are the same. All vertical lines are parallel to each other. Um, so are all horizontal lines. All horizontal lines are parallel. These are horizontal lines over here on the paper. They're running parallel to one another. If lines are perpendicular, then the product of their slopes is negative one. What does that mean? What that really means is when we have perpendicular lines, their slopes will be opposite reciprocals. An example of that would be if one slope had a if, if one line had a slope of positive four fifths, then the other slope take the reciprocal of that five over four. This one was positive. The other slope would be negative. They have opposite signs and they're reciprocals of each other. It is true that if you multiply them together, you would get negative one. Um, but I like thinking of them as opposite reciprocals better. Okay, so that's if the lines are perpendicular to each other. If the lines are parallel, the slopes are equal. They're going to be the same. Okay, so come down here and we want to decide whether these lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So we have a graph. A is located at 3, 6, but it looks like we're counting by 2s. So over 3, up 6, there's A. B is at negative nine, positive two. So that's line A, B. And then C is at five, four. And D is at two, three. Okay, so they look parallel to one another, but we better go ahead and test their slopes. So they're using this formula for slope and they're subtracting the y. So for a, b, they're doing this y minus that y. That's fine that you use the six first, you just have to do the x's in the same order. And sure enough, they do that x minus that x in the denominator. And so you end up with four over 12, which reduces down to one third. When we go to do CD, <clears throat> um, they do this y minus that y, four minus three, and then they go back and do x minus x, five minus two. We're gonna end up with one over three. So they have the same slope, so they are parallel to each other. All right, so what about A, B, and C, D? A is at 14, 13. B is at negative 11, zero. And I don't have a straight edge, that's the problem here. So 
I'm just eyeballing it. There's AB. C is at negative three, positive seven, right there in the middle of the box. And D is at negative four, negative five. Now, if I'm just looking at this, those don't look, certainly don't look parallel and they don't look perpendicular either. But let's verify it um, using the formula. So for A, B, we'll do this Y minus that Y, 13 minus zero, and then this X minus that X, 14 minus negative 11. We're finding the slope of A, B. So I end up with positive 13, that's gonna become addition over 25. Okay, for CD, and by the way, that makes sense that it's positive because that line was leaning to the right. Um, CD is also gonna have a positive slope, so that should tell you something. But in order to find the slope of CD, we'll do this Y minus that Y, seven minus negative five, over x minus x, negative three minus negative four. Both become addition. We end up with 12 over one. Those slopes are not the same and they certainly aren't opposite reciprocals either. So this one's going to be neither. All right, parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So notice that They've done all of the work already, and we could we could go through it, but we've done that twice now. And I want you to see that those lines um, don't have the same slopes, nor are those opposite reciprocals. So this one's going to end up being neither, um, neither parallel nor perpendicular. But I want to remind you of a quick way to do slope. If they give you the graph, well, first of all, I can see that this one is leaning left. This one will have a negative slope and this one will have a positive slope. But remember, we could just do rise and run. Here are two good points on the line. If I start low, now I'm counting by twos, I have to go up two, four, six, and I go to the left, two, four. I go up six and left four, rise and run. That was line TU. Six over negative four reduces down to negative three halves. On this line, I have a little further to rise and run. Remember, we're counting by twos. I'm at the middle of the box here, so be careful. But I go up two, four, six, eight, ten, and I go over two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Up ten, over fourteen, and there's my slope. So if you like that, we could do it that way. Again, they've set these up for us down here, though. Let's come here. I can see that this is line EF and it does have the negative slope. They've done it subtracting the points. Why don't we rise and run? Um, once again, we're counting by twos here. Um, yeah, this is gonna be harder to do because it's not right on the line. So it doesn't, yeah, let's just go ahead and we'll we'll do it the other way. If you, there's any doubt as to where the point lies, in this case, it doesn't exactly look halfway in between to me. I can't assume that. So I'm gonna let go of this and I'm just gonna use the formula. But I have y minus y, negative one minus six, and then x minus x in the same order. Negative one minus six is negative seven. Six minus three will give us positive three. So for DG, um, they've done, they're doing it this way. They've done this Y minus that Y, five minus negative one. So we need to start here for X as well. 12 minus negative two is six over 14. Those are both even and that reduces down to three sevenths. So this one is negative seven over three. This one is positive three over seven. They're opposite reciprocals. So these are going to be perpendicular. Two lines. The two lines Oh.
the two lines do not have the same slope, so they are not parallel. Um, so are they perpendicular? We wanna find the product of their slopes. Um, again, I don't really think we have to do this. We can just say that their slopes are opposite reciprocals, and that's all it takes to make them perpendicular. We have a negative 7 thirds and a positive 3 sevenths. But I mean, sure enough, if we were to multiply those together, the product of the slopes is negative 1, so the two lines are perpendicular to each other. Okay, we have one more to check, and then that's all we're going to do. So look at these lines. Are they parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Well, remember, um, it told us back over here on the very first page, and we can see it on the graph, that vertical and horizontal lines are going to be perpendicular to each other, and that's what we have here. CD is vertical, and AB is horizontal. I can see the right angle that they make on the graph paper. I know they make a right angle, so these are going to be perpendicular to one another.